In the previous lecture, we discussed the concept of simultaneous events. So we said that two events that might appear simultaneous to one person do not appear simultaneous to a second person. And this basically implied that the concept of simultaneity is not an absolute concept. It is relative with respect to our person, to the observer. Now, because simultaneity deals with time, is time also a relative concept? That is, does time pass differently to people in different reference frames? So, to answer this question, let's conduct the following thought experiment. Let's begin with case number one, in which we basically have a spaceship that is moving with a constant velocity, let's say, in the following general direction. Now, inside that spaceship, we have a mirror attached to one end of that spaceship. And at the other end, we have an observer that is stationary stationary with respect to that spaceship. So basically, because we are in the reference frame of this spaceship, the observer is assumed to be stationary. So let's suppose the distance between the observer and the mirror is given by lowercase d. So let's conduct the following two events. Let's define event number one to be the event when a person takes a flashlight and quickly turns on and turns off that flashlight. So he sends a beam of light directly across to the following mirror. That is event number one. Now the light travels across to the mirror, reflects and travels back. And when the beam of light returns to that observer, that is event number two. So we have two different events that are taking place within the following reference frame. Now, the question is, how long will it take that light to travel from the observer to the mirror and back to that observer? In other words, what is the time between event number one and event number two? So, to the observer inside the spaceship traveling in space, light travels directly across reflect off of the mirror and travels directly back. So the ray of light travels across and then directly back. So the time between our two events, event number one, when the light leaves the observer and event number two, when the light returns to that observer is given by simply taking the total distance traveled by the light and dividing by the speed of light. So this change in time t naught, which is known as the proper time, is equal to 2d divided by c, where 2d is the distance there and the distance back, d plus d, or 2d and c, is the speed of light, which is a constant according to Einstein's special theory of relativity. So let's call this equation A. Once again, equation A gives us the quantity of time that tells us how long our ray of light travels there and back and this is known as the proper time. Now let's move on to case number two. Let's basically change reference frames. Let's suppose now we have a person that is stationary on earth. So we're assuming the earth is stationary. We have a person at this position that is standing on, on that spot on earth. So now that person is observing that same ray of light that is basically traveling. The only difference now, the ray of light will travel a different pathway and that's because our spaceship is actually traveling with respect to the stationary observer on Earth with a velocity given by V. So instead of traveling this straight pathway, it will travel the following pathway. So, 
Re relative to the stationary observer on Earth, the spaceship is moving with the velocity v to the right along the horizontal axis. Therefore, the light travels the diagonal distance as shown in the following diagram by this line. So basically, as our person is observing, the spaceship is moving between the following three positions and the ray of light also moves. So basically, when our person inside the spaceship creates that ray of light, by the time that ray of light reaches this mirror, the plane or the spaceship has traveled a certain distance, let's say given by L. Now, when that ray of light bounces back, reflects, and travels back, that spaceship has traveled a distance L. Now, these two distances are the same exact because V is assumed to be constant. And the distance between the observer inside that spaceship and our mirror is once again given by D. So, since the light travels with identical speed in both cases, but travels a longer distance in case number two, the time between event one and event two is longer for the stationary observer found on the Earth. So basically, the quantity of time it takes the light to travel for the observer inside the spaceship is less than the time for the stationary observer on Earth. So, what exactly is the time interval delta t as measured by the observer on Earth between event 1 and event 2? Between sending our light signal and receiving that light signal on the following spaceship. So, let's begin by using the speed of light. We know the speed of light is always equal to c, the speed of light within a vacuum, according to Einstein's special theory of relativity. So, c is equal to the total distance that light traveled for this particular case divided by the total time for case number two. So our time is given by, let's say, delta t. It's different than delta t naught. And the total distance is simply this distance and this distance, where this distance is the hypotenuse of the following right triangle. So that that means by applying the Pythagorean theorem, this distance is equal to radical of L squared plus D squared. So because we have two of these hypotenuses, that means we simply multiply by two. So two multiplied by the square root of L squared plus D squared divided by delta T. Now, what exactly is the relationship between the velocity of the spaceship and this distance L? So we know the total horizontal distance our spaceship travels is L plus L equal to 2L. Now, velocity of the spaceship V is equal to the total distance it travels 2L divided by the time it takes it to travel delta T, which is the same time that it takes for this ray of light to travel for the observer that is stationary on Earth. So we can take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for L. L is equal to V multiplied by delta T divided by 2. So now we can take this equation, C is equal to this, and replace L with V multiplied by delta T divided by 2, and we get the following result. Now, let's take and square both sides to get rid of the following radical, and we get C squared is equal to 4 multiplied by V squared multiplied by delta T squared divided by 4 plus D squared, and we divide that by delta T squared. So now let's actually rearrange our equation and let's solve for delta t and we get the following result. 
delta t is equal to 2 multiplied by d divided by c times the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Now let's go back to equation A. Equation A gives us the proper time. Delta t naught is equal to 2d divided by c. Let's take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for d. So d is equal to c multiplied by delta t naught divided by 2. So now let's take this d and replace that d with what we just said. So we get the following result. Notice the C's will cancel and the 2 will also cancel. And we see that delta T is equal to delta T naught, the proper time, divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared divided by R squared. So, notice the following important point. Because V is essentially always less than C, this quantity is always less than 1. So, 1 minus a quantity less than 1 gives us a value less than 1. And the square root of a number less than 1 is also a number less than 1. So, we see that delta T is always greater than delta T naught. That is the time that is elapsed for the person inside the spaceship is always less than the time elapsed for the person that is stationary on Earth that is observing that moving spaceship. So once again, time for the moving observer always passes more slowly with respect to the person that is stationary. And this is known as time dilation.